Hey everyone! So I have sort of a different video for you today. Um, it's going to be more of a tutorial video, which I usually don't do, um, but this is going to be kind of cool. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, I'm doing this video because when I had talked about my shapes or labels or photo frames that I die cut when I do my prep work for my mini albums, I was showing things like this. Um, you know, basically when I just make mini albums, I'll pull coordinating cardstock and I'll cord coordinating cardstock and I'll pre-cut some different shapes. These are some label shapes. This is um, for like a photo mat and this is just going to be a flip or a flap, whatever you want to call it. And you can see that little beveled edge here. But that's done by embossing. Um, these labels have some really great embossing detail. I love them. I got a couple other ones here. Um, so basically I had a comment from one of my subbies who is Serena B. Hi Serena! Um, she had asked um, she had asked how to go about embossing. She's not really familiar with how to do it. She has a machine but she's only had it for a little bit and she just got a Halloween die set that says that it embosses. So she was wondering how I did it. So I just thought I'd make a video tutorial in case anyone out there has ever wanted to do it too. Um, so I'll go over all the supplies you're going to need and I'll show you how I do it. Now I'm going to post a link below to her channel. Um, to Serena B and she you gotta go check her out because she's having some really awesome um, tutorial series on different Halloween projects and it's awesome you gotta check it out and she's also having a giveaway and the way you enter her giveaway is actually very creative and very awesome so go check out her channel um, again I will link it down below so this video is for you Serena I hope you find it helpful if um, I don't know what machine you have but I'm hoping that um, you're, you're, you'll be able to experiment with your own machine and the different plates and able to get the same effect. So let me just show you what you're going to need right now. Um, I'm For the sake of this tutorial, I'm obviously going to be using my machine, which is a cuddle bug. But I'm pretty sure that you'll have similar plates and similar techniques if you're using like the Grand Caliber or the Sizzix. I'm not really sure the proper name of all the other machines because this is the only one that I have for um, die cutting and embossing, but I love it. I've had this thing probably about five years now. Um, this is my cuddle bug. Um, I use it all the time. I use it for everything. I can cut my spell binders on it. I can cut my, cut my Tim Holtz, um, all my Tim Holtz dies on it, all my old Sizzix dies. Um, you just vary which plates you use and it's pretty simple. Um, so yeah, so you're going to need your cuddle bug, which let me open it now. You're going to need the plates that come with the cuddle bug. Um, you're going to be using all the plates, and I'll just show you which, what that means. You're going to be using your A plate, which is your spacer plate, the big thick one. You're going to need your C plate. So Sorry, it's dirty. <clears throat> I don't know what that is, but um, your C plate, and I use that when I'm going to be cutting my spellbinder, uh, using my spellbinder die and you're going to need um, two of the B plates. Um, you can see mine are completely used up. I mean I, I've i used, like I said, I've had these for five years. I've never replaced them. Um, I won't until I really can't get a good cut out of it. I don't really have any trouble. If by any chance I have a really ornate shape and there's like one or two spots that aren't really cutting through, I'll just run it back through with a piece of cardstock and no problem. It comes right out. Um, this one's even warped a little bit. So what I'll do is I'll just make sure that the top rate, the top part that's the highest, I send it through kind of um, the high part is push, pushing against the die, if that makes sense. So it's almost like pushing down further. Um, but that's, I only do that with this one because it is bent. Normally they're flat. I mean, I think there's tutorials out there on how to kind of clean your plate. I've seen people like bake it, but I don't really think I need to at this point because it's still working fine for me. And... Um, I'm starting to think now it's kind of curved so I can just keep using it in different directions and maybe it'll flatten it out so we'll see if that works. So you're going to need all your plates. Now any die that you're going to use you're going to just need to make sure that it says that it embosses so um, the other thing you're going to need is just a die that is capable of embossing and if you look at this one here it says it cuts embosses and stencils. I don't really know how these I don't know how these stencil. I've never really kind of looked into it, so I'm not really sure. So just for the sake of the video, we're just going to be cutting and embossing. So any shape that embosses, and you're also going to need um, 
embossing rubber mats. Now I have had this thing, like I said, for five years and I didn't get this until I think within the past year because A, I wasn't really sure how to emboss what I needed and B, I was using something else before the mats and I'll talk about that as well. Just give me one second. So you are gonna need um, a rubber mat and this is from this is a Spellbinders mat. Um, so it kind of comes in similar packaging, obviously a different shape, but it's kind of, it's in similar packaging to this, and it's just um, two rubber mats that come in the pack. Um, I got mine at Michael's, but I'm pretty sure that any scrapbooking online supply store has it. I did check into scrapbook.com. They still have them in stock. They're like between $8 and $11 around there. I'm not really sure. I had used a coupon. Um, now... When I had said that I was using something previous before I got the rubber mats, I'll explain. I've seen people say that instead of using the rubber mats, if you use foam, like the kind you got, would get at like the kids part of the craft store, that if you use foam, it kind of gives you the same effect. And I've used the foam and it does work, but I do think that the rubber mats give you a much deeper impression. And I am i don't regret buying them at all. Um, I don't think they're pricey and I don't regret it. But I will say, if you aren't able to get foam, I mean, if you aren't able to get these rubber mats and you do prefer to use the foam, you might have to just experiment with how many layers <clears throat> you're gonna need to get a really good embossing effect. Um, so I will, and I don't know if this will help you, but I will say that, um, sorry, I had to go in my drawer. The two of these mats together only equal out to an eighth of an inch. And I have my Tim Holtz ruler here. So, if you can see, the two of them together only, it's going to be really hard to show you. The two together, sorry about the reflection, are the thickness of the first line in the Tim Holtz ruler, and that's only one eighth of an inch. Oop, losing it here. Um, an eighth of an inch. So if you are using foam, make sure that if you like double it up or triple it up that you're getting about an eighth of an inch and even more if you need to because I'm not sure if it um, squeezes as well as this. So just experiment and play around and honestly it I would recommend experimenting and playing around even if you are going to be using this rubber mat because if you don't get the layer the sandwich layer right you could actually cut your foam mat so um, it can't hurt to experiment with foam first so that's a tip as well. So that's the supplies you're going to need. You're going to need your cuddle bug or cutting machine. You're going to need all your plates. You're going to need either foam or an embossing mat. And obviously you're going to need your cardstock. So um, let's just get started. Let me just find some scrap. I know I have some scrap cardstock here to use. Hang on. I'll use orange for the sake of the video. You can see it better than the black. So let's widen this out a little bit. Okay. So. The first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna cut your shape, and um, I'm sure you're all familiar with that sandwich. And you're, I'll just go over it just in case. You're gonna use your A plate, you're gonna use your B plate, and then you're gonna grab your die. Let me just pull out one of these um, framed shapes that you've already seen me cut. I just showed it before, these here. Um, I'm gonna pick this shape. Well, actually, no, I'll pick the shape that embosses really well. So I'll pick this shape. This one's actually my favorite because I was using it for my Halloween mini and I think it looks like a little spider web shape on the side. So that's the one I like the best, but we'll use this one because it's got a really great embossing detail. So again, sorry, your sandwich layer is A plate, B plate. Then you're gonna put your cardstock down. You're gonna put your die with the edge. The cutting edge will go down against the paper. So you're going to do it like that, and then you're going to put your C plate on top. So I always just remember C is for cutting. So the C plate goes on top, and you're just going to run it through. And I like to go back and then forth. I just like it to end up in front of me. So now the other thing I'm going to say is I would recommend keeping your paper in your die. Don't take it out yet. And I'll show you the reason why this is important. But what you're going to do now is you're going to take the die and the cardstock still in it and you're going to flip it over. You want the cardstock side up. So you're going to place it back down on the bottom half of your sandwich, which is plate A, plate B. And now you're going to take your rubber mats and you're going to use both of them together. 
and you're just going to layer it right over the die. And now you're going to use your B plate. So your sandwich now is A, B, die, cardstock facing up, your rubber mats, and your B plate. So remember, B is for embossing. So I'm going to do that, and I'm going to run it through again. It gets a little bit tight, and you can feel it's kind of squishing out the, full, um, the rubber mat. That's fine. And again, it's going to be tight, but it's not tight enough to cut into the mat. That's why I think it's good to experiment and use foam first, because you'll see kind of how it works. So you're going to pull off. Oh, how's that? It pulls it right out of the, the die. You don't even have to pick at it. So now you can see that beautiful, beautiful embossing effect. And um, I guess if you experiment with foam, you can kind of make this more defined or less defined based on how much embossing you do. Now, the reason I recommend leaving the cardstock in the die before, like just throughout the whole process is if you take it out, like I know this is a really ornate shape and obviously it would be hard to line it back up, but even a simple shape such as this shape, um, I think it had come out, let me try to zoom in, it had come out before I was able to, why is it not cooperating here? I'll just leave it like that, okay. So this is one that came out really nice. You have that nice beveled edge, um, nice and clean. But this one here, I think it had moved before I was able to emboss it and you can see how, oh, hold on. You can see how it didn't line up really well. So you have like almost like a triple edge. So I don't like how that came out. I think it moved on me. So that's why I recommend just keeping it in the die. Um, so that's how you emboss. Um, and I really love it. You know, I had had this machine and I wasn't really using it for all the different ways that it was capable of. And um, I'm really glad I bought the mats. Um, I really, I really don't regret it. I will, what was I going to say? Oh, so when I said that I can also cut other dies on this, I can. So let me get one of my Tim Holtz dies and show you what I mean. Um, let's see. Um, what do I want to cut? Oh, I know what I'm going to, you know what? I know what I'm going to show you. This is something I experimented with the other day and I loved how it came out. Now, if you happen to have different types of cardstock and paper, it's so much fun to see what other types of paper look like when you die cut them. This is a piece of, I guess you could call it cardstock, but I'm not really sure. I was gifted an, a, a huge stack of this by my boss. Um, she had got it, um, I don't remember where she said she got it, but she would gotten a huge stack of it from somebody and Ooh, it's like making me look really pale. The black is not good right now. Um, she'd gotten from somebody that got it from like an office and she was like, oh, is there anything you can do with this? And I'm like, of course. So it's got a nice weight to it. Um, it's not exactly chipboard, but it's got like this gorgeous texture and it's shiny. So I was playing with it the other day and I was like, oh, how cool would that be um, just to see what the different shapes look like with glot with that kind of card stuff. So let me show you how that came out. I used my Tim Holtz um, Haunted House or Crooked House, I forget what it's called. Um, and I cut out a haunted house and it's it's got some nice weight to it and it looks awesome. So I experimented and I tried something else and let me show you really quick. And I'm gonna have to do it on camera. But I tried embossing the paper before I cut it and I loved how it came out. So let me show you that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my spiderweb embossing folder and I'm, I didn't really cut this to any shape, I just trimmed it. And what I'm gonna do is first I'm gonna send it through and I'm gonna emboss it. So what I'm gonna do is use my A plate. Let me zoom out here. So I'm gonna use my A plate, my B plate, and I'm just gonna sandwich my paper in the embossing folder and my B plate. Again, B is for embossing. So let me send this through. 
So that's why I was thinking it was it's a great idea to experiment with different types of paper just to see which papers or which materials will actually hold an embossed shape. So I'll show you how awesome this looks. Can you see that? Let me try to zoom in. I think it looks so cool and it embosses so well. I was worried that it wouldn't, but it's got a great, great look to it. So then I thought, oh, well then I can die cut it after. So let me just pull a shape out of my, my little die container and I'll show you how I store my dies. I just use a five by seven iris case that, oh, that always happens. I just used a 5x7 iris case that I got at Michael's. You can get it at any, um, any craft store. And I buy these magnetic sheets from Hobby Lobby. And they're like, I think, I think they're like 6 or 5 by like 8.5 or 9. So I just had to trim like about, a, about an inch off the top just to make it fit. And I didn't want to waste my scraps. So I layered all the inch scraps on the front here. And they don't stick. I need to get something better than just my tape runner. But... I'm able to still store some dies up on the top. I need to just glue them down a little bit stronger because sometimes the magnetic pull from this side pulls them and sticks over here. So I need to figure out how to glue them down better. But I have about eight or nine sheets here and I still have plenty of room to store some more dies, but I keep all my spell binders in here um, and they store very, very well. And you can see I still have room um, to add more. So I love the storage container. It's all my spell binders and they fit in this small little space. Mm -hmm. So let me pick a shape that I want. Um, let's see. I will do this shape. I like this shape. So let me just make sure it will fit. Yes, it will. So I picked this shape. So what I'm going to do is I'm now going to cut it. So let me just line it up. Okay, now I'm going to take my C plate, C is for cutting, and I'm just going to eyeball it. I'm not going to like tape it down. Um, I'll just show you how awesome that that looks, an embossed die cut shape. Now I experimented with this and um, I tried embossing the the, to get that beveled edge effect after I had already embossed it with my embossing folder and it kind of flattened this out a little bit so I wouldn't recommend doing that um, although it's it'd be nice to have that effect on the side too I'm not really sure how you would do with it without ruining it but as I just cut this through now you can actually it kind of did it it kind of gave it that beveled edge which is kind of cool and I'm wondering if that's because this was already textured so that's really cool so that's a um, it's a nice technique to try if you want to make a photo map, but you don't want to leave it so plain um, when you're putting it on your mini album. Um, and you can use this technique for obviously any project, but I just think it's really different and interesting. Um, and I just realized I totally got sidetracked, but I was trying to show you how I can use my Tim Holtz dies in the cuddle bug. And you can see that this is a pretty thick spacer plate. And then if you look at the Tim Holtz dies, they're pretty thick as well. So the only thing you're doing is you're just removing your spacer plate from your sandwich. So if you were to die cut with Tim Holtz, you would use a B plate, your die, and another B plate, and that's it. Um, I don't have any paper in there, but I'll just show you. It runs through, it's got a nice tight fit, and it will definitely cut through your material. Um, like I said, I've used this for everything, all my dyes that I have, and it's great. So I hope this tutorial was helpful, um, Serena, and anyone else that's been interested in kind of using your cuddle bug and embossing with your stencil, I mean, embossing with your um, dyes. But again, I don't know how to stencil with these, so if anybody has a link to a video that shows what they mean with stenciling, that'd be really awesome for me to learn as well. Because... Um, yeah, that'd be cool to know. But anyway, um, thank you guys for watching. I hope this tutorial was helpful. Hopefully I can come out with some more for you. Um, I just, I don't, I always figure people could just go look things up on YouTube, but then I forget that, you know, sometimes it's cool to see it um, from people that you 
kind of relate to crafting or you like their videos or you like what they make sometimes it's nice to see how they do things because you never know if people do it differently you never know if somebody has a different machine and you know somebody might have a tip that you never thought about um, I will give you one more tip I'm sorry while I'm here I you saw how easily these popped out um, when you're embossing sometimes they stick to your rubber mat which is cool so you don't have to deal with poking out all these little shapes and I didn't run into that problem with these but when I was cutting this die, which I forget where I got it from, but it says smile and it is so thin. It's literally like you wrote it with a pen. I mean, the, the paper is so, the design, I'm sorry, is so thin that it was impossible for me to get it out without ruining it. So I contacted the manufacturer and I asked them if they, if they had any tips. And they had recommended running it through with wax paper in between the dye and the paper. Let me just tell you, best tip I ever got because it comes out like butter. Um, I was actually kind of surprised that they don't offer that as a tip on their packaging because things like this, the paper just does not come out on its own. It really doesn't. So I think I had already given them that as a recommendation just to kind of help others, but they were very quick to respond and they did give me that tip and it works wonders so if you have any ornate intricate dies and you have a trouble you're having trouble picking all the things out use wax paper it's a lifesaver I promise um, and then the last tip I'm gonna uh, not tip just the last thing I'm gonna touch upon is these rubber mats um, I've only die cut one shape and you can see there's a lot of like paper pulp on here when I was die cutting this weekend, this thing was like confetti. I mean, it was covered and it gets kind of like dusty almost, like a paper dust. Um, they rinse clean, so don't worry about if these get gross. And that impression you see, it goes away. It kind of like is like a self-healing mat almost. Um, I actually die cut some bottle caps and you can see it didn't ruin it. You see a little bit of a circle, but that'll go away. And then there's always the other side. So, um those are nice and clean but these just rinse really clean I just rinsed them right before I did the video and they come out like new so anyway thanks guys for watching I hope this was helpful I'm sorry it ended up being so long but I really wanted to try to include any information that you know um, I feel is helpful so thanks guys for watching and again check out Serena's um, channel down below if you love Halloween projects um, she's got lots of them and lots of cool cool videos and um she's awesome so thanks for watching guys we'll see you in the next video bye